Hello, media critique sheep followers. I'm borderline Latina, and I am taking over. In my spinoff series, I explore a variety of topics within the fields of mental health, sexuality, media, and social justice, and much, much more. And as always. This is unscripted, yet still informed by research, theory, knowledge. You get it. All right, let's get it. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the rainbow map of rights. Have you ever felt like a dumbass because you thought you knew more about a topic or a subject than you actually realized? Or you're coined or told to be the quote-unquote expert of a certain topic, but you realize that, and you know that you have much more to learn and to continue to learn. Well, that me. And when it comes to the term expert, I really don't like being called an expert, or I should say, I don't like calling myself an expert. I think it's kind of similar to the way I feel about the word ally. I think those are the types of terms that it's better for other people to call you that to be legitimate, because with especially with the word expert, I see that as, oh, you know, I know everything, I'm the shit, and I also think that expert kind of gives that kind of end destination feel, right? I'm the expert, and there's nothing else to learn. I learned it all, and that's it. And for a lot of topics, that's not the case. In the field of knowledge and research and theory, things are always developing and changing, and things are being added, and so it's always important to stay up to date. But I also acknowledge the complexity of it, especially as a woman of color. The idea of being an expert, while yes, you don't want to be, you know, arrogant and feel like you know everything when you don't. But at the same time, I do know that women and women of color tend to underestimate or understate how much knowledge they have, and they tend to suffer from imposter syndrome. You know, myself included. And so, yes, I am the shit, and I do have a lot of background and knowledge. But also acknowledging that I don't know everything, and I'm still continuing to grow and learn. So what topic am I talking about anyway? Well, this topic, the rainbow map of rights, is focusing on LGBTQ rights and discrimination across the map, specifically the United States. We can have a whole nother episode talking about different countries in different continents. Continents, yes, like the alphabet. Continent, but for the purposes of this, I'm gonna focus on the United States. And this episode was inspired by recent events that are happening statewide and nationally, and how that can be drastically one can be drastically different from another. So while it seems like there has been a slight Shift in the positive direction towards LGBTQ rights nationally. We still have to think about what that looks when we look at the different levels closer and closer to the ground, right? State levels, etc. And as someone that's lived in different parts of the country and grew up primarily in a specific part of the country, I guess I tended to overestimate. The amount of protection that LGBTQ folks, or gender and sexual minorities, as I tend to call them, I tended to overestimate the amount of protections that they actually have. For that one, that was very hard for me to acknowledge, and I acknowledge that more and more recently, where the current state that I'm at, which is in the South, there has been this. Recent push of pushing legislation, discrimination legislation, under the table in a very kind of sneaky and underhanded way, where they're pushing a lot of things to get passed and not giving people 
enough notification so they couldn't protest the gap about it. If I'm being completely honest, which I am. And so the types of legislation that I've been trying to get passed is restricting it, the ability for people to, for trans kids to apply to sports teams and to be part of a sport team. They're being restricted to be only part of the sport team of the sex that they are assigned at birth. There's also been recent legislation is trying to get passed on medical services, the right to medical services, and the push for religious freedom, meaning that medical providers can have the opportunity and the ability to refuse services to LGBTQ folks, but also it can expand more than that. And in terms of religious freedom, the ability to deny or refuse people's services based on whatever they think the person is doing that is sinful. So if a person deems that the person life, if they're living a sinful life, they can deny that person access to services. And so I'm like, what is this? Sinful, first of all, Sin means, I mean, there's, this is not first of all, this is like the sixth and seventh first of alls. Because there's a lot of layers and I want to focus on specific ones. So the ones that I'm talking about are not, it's not exhaustive. But things that pointed out to me was, besides the whole bullshit of, you know, discriminating against LGBTQ folks, the fact that it is kind of this broad word of sinful. And that is something that I've had conversations with colleagues that are more informed about these issues and they're trying to advocate in the rights of LGBTQ folks and, you know, they're trying to go against these discrimination laws that are being passed. The fact that I'm hearing language from the other side of, you know, protecting their religious freedom, right, which obviously that in itself makes sense, right? Just as we want to protect the rights of people for their sexuality and gender Understandably, I understand the right for someone to practice whatever religion they choose. However, if that particular freedom is infringing on the rights of others, that's when I have a little issue to it. And when we talk about sin, what does that mean? Leading a life of sin could mean anything, right? It can go beyond just, you know, gender identity and sexual orientation. Are we talking about unmarried people? Are we talking about um, unmarried people living together? Premarital sex? What are we talking about? And so this can apply to a larger range of people that fall inside or outside of the LGBTQ community. And obviously, LGBT community rights in itself, that is something that affects all of us. But when we also talk about the expanding that to this term called what is sinful and what is not sinful, that, and in terms of how you interpret that, that could be a large range of things. I mean, who is without sin? But I digress, but not really. So I started doing a little digging around in the internet. And, and so humor me because I know obviously you can't see what I'm looking at right now, but I'm gonna explain it the best that I can. So I was digging around the internets and I found this website it's by MAP, the Movement Advancement Project, lgbtmap.org is the website. And on the website, they have this policy map um, where they, look at all the 50 states and they kind of rank them in order of how many protections that they have for LGBTQ rights. So imagine a map of United States. That in itself may be hard for a lot of folks, myself included, knowing exactly where certain states are, but bear with me. Imagine the state of United States, the map, and knowing where you are in respect to things, where you're located in terms of region, right? Compared to other regions across the state. And the way that they have it is color coded and it's different colors, but not the colors that you expect, okay? They have a, a, a shade and so they have different shades and so it ranges from green, forest green, to a paler green, 
to a pale orange, and at the bottom is red. So the greener the state, the more protections you have for LGBTQ rights. And then, if it's on the orange, and I say orange in my Jersey accent, and you realize in a second, orange means low to no protections. Pale green on the top. So we have forest green. We have this kind of paler greens, medium and fair. Then we have the orange, which is low to none. And then we have red, which is negative protection. So you're taking away rights. All right, stay with me now. So your knowledge of where the general regions of the United States, if you were to guess, where do you think the green states are compared to the oranges and the reds. Oh, give me a second. I feel like I'm Dora the Explorer staring at you. Okay. So, the coasts, particularly, you know, the the west coast and in particular the northeast coast is where you see all your greens, your forest greens and your your paler greens, right? I would say the West Coast is exclusively forest greens. The East Coast that definitely has more variations in terms of the different shades of colors, but the Northeast, for the most part, is your forest greens. You got your oranges in the middle. For the most part, there are some little blips of different colors in there. Where do you think the red is? The South. And so, in the description of this episode, I talk about states living up to their stereotypes. No one really likes stereotypes, right? It's judgmental. But when you think about protections for and against LGBTQ rights, I wonder. We see that the South has red in general. That's not really saying that much for the South in terms of LGBTQ rights. It's kind of living towards that stereotype, which is really offensive, really, really unfortunate. So I look at this and I think about the places that I lived, which I, looking at this map, I've actually, I think I've actually lived in every state of the shade, if that makes sense. So I've lived in the forest green, the paler green, and the orange and the red right now. And it's very interesting as someone who's lived primarily in the green, forest green, but pale green at some point, I always thought, just like with other things in the Northeast, and you know, when I'm thinking of the Northeast, you know, we're talking about greater New York City, Jersey area, that's where I'm from. I always thought that there could have been way more support for LGBTQ folks. Like I saw, obviously, you know, as someone that's on the outside looking in, I could see that in general, and I think this is across the board for wherever you live, that there's a lot of discrimination and there's a lot of issues, you know, in regards for LGBTQ rights to be protected and and socially and everything like that too. So when I think about these protections, I'm actually thinking that where I grew up was like the bare minimum was like these, this is the rights that people should have at least. And so to learn that that was actually on the higher end, right? Like people in that era are actually having the most or the best among the best or most protections in the whole entire country. That's what brought me down. In this place where I'm seeing, even in the places where they're having the most protections, obviously there's still a lot of issues and not as much acceptance. Um, there definitely can be more visibility, but still just because the community is visible doesn't mean that everything is sunshine and roses. And so I think to add to the complexity of that, yes, we're talking about the red states having negative protections and it's terrible, but just because you're in a green state and you have those protections doesn't necessarily mean that things are perfect. Definitely better in terms of protections, but not perfect. Okay. And those were kind of my feels. And and living in a pale state too, right? Where it's like, okay, well, it's not what we take a lot of states' uh, rights away. But we're not really having that much protection as well. And so it's very interesting my work when I work in terms of educating people and mental health and healing and other advocacy things. It's very interesting to see how it plays out. 
And so with that, I say, and I've always known as a quote unquote expert in involvement, in a evolvement. Is that a good word? Expert in training, evolving expertise valve of a person. I like that. Let's stick with that. I'm always growing and I'm always learning and I hope that I can continue to research those things and hopefully maybe you can take a ride with me too. Staying informed and staying up to date with what's happening, not just in terms of the broader media nationally, but state and locally and seeing what is happening under the table, what is being portrayed in the media, what's being highlighted in the media, what is it? The results may shock you intrigue you depress you or fuel you and or fuel you on your quest towards social justice onward this has been borderline latina takes over until some other time